Ready, set, go. Boy. I have saltine or red. The tall, lanky guy. Oh my, oh god. my. This tall, lanky guy. Oh my gosh. Really? An author? What, what, was, what has he written? I heard that was just a rumor. At least a handful of things I've heard. At least a handful yeah. of things, but like, uh, have you have you seen the the fic that was just posted? Help me out, Doc. Yeah. No, I, I haven't. I think yes. you should read that on stream today. You know, <laughs> you know, you, you, God, you I'm not, Speaking I'm of not which, happy with the name of Gold God. <laughs> okay, don't worry about that. I'll be voicing the Gold God. I swear to God, it's a fucking pelican. I'm going to kill you. Uh, no, it's a seagull. Why would I... Obviously, it's a gull. Yeah, no, it's a it's a seagull. You know, what? and you have the it's fucking the god of this... put it in there. So shut up. Uh, quick backstory uh, to what we're about to read. I'm so excited. Um, I also have not put together a thumbnail for this, so I'm just gonna be on cam while while we're reading. <laughs> this is not gonna go well. I love yeah. this. I'm excited. So when I started writing this, I originally intended it to be just like a one and done story, like a short play of sorts. But as I started like figuring out what the plot of the thing was, and I as I got writing and like establishing characters and character relationships and things. I realized, oh boy, I really want to be able to build up this plot. So what we're going to be reading is, in fact, episode one. Yes, I'm so excited. Of uh, what's now going to be a series. Oh, this yes. is going to be fantastic. This is going to be amazing. Uh, we're not going to be doing an episode, like, for the rest, for, like... Like, the next Tall Lanky Audio Theater stream might not necessarily be the next episode. I'm going to try my best to keep, to, like, write them as, like, when I'm able. Uh, but this will be a recurring series. Oh, I'm so down. I'm so I'm excited I'm also to very it. excited. Oh, I'm so, so excited. Uh, without further ado... Um... Let's begin episode one of Help Me Out, Doc, an Enemies to Lovers Janet and Duke fanfic uh, by yours truly. Um, it was even funnier because Janet and I are in the same room today, so this is this is yeah. going to be great. This is, yeah. this is perfect timing. And uh, funny enough, and as as a result of me trying to like build up the plot uh y'all don't have scenes together yet y it's your characters have not to lovers. it's slow it's, burn it's a lovers. slow burn oh, yes. which in in my opinion is the only way to do an enemies to lovers yes yeah, situation you know, you know dude and janet should date one day should we date one day? if you want to write yeah, that I think, I think be that my guest be awkward. i don't know like but that just, seems pretty that gay sounds awkward it sounds pretty, pretty gay. gay now that you mention it it, it does, does sound pretty gay it does sound a little gay <laughs> oh it's just a little okay. just a tad bit gay <laughs> so it's fucking um so uh this series is set in the post-apocalyptic city of Calcouver. Um, what kind of apocalypse? Uh, we haven't established yet. Goose. Um, With everything going yeah. on in the world, use your imagination. Yeah. Yeah. The exactly. present day apocalypse. Whatever's going on in your neck of the woods, it's happening now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's begin episode one, scene one. Would you? Okay. Uh, okay. Do you have? Do we have any any more questions? Do you want me to read the character descriptions as well? Oh. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, we might as well. All right. From the top, help me out, Doc. An enemies to lovers, Janet and Dute fan fiction by Connor, tall, lanky guy, Thiessen. Doctor Dute. 
uh, or sorry, Janet, short, cute, chaos with unpredictable hair color, looking for work as a freelance witch. Dr. Dude, distracted by default, but helpful with when called upon, occasionally attempts to seem like they know what they're doing. Connor, I think he's a streamer or something. Kim, Dude's personal assistant and office manager, makes a futile but impressive effort to minimize inevitable property damage. Katie, Dude's lab assistant, who probably knows their way around the lab better than Dude does, but knows how much fun Dude has. Bonk, a goose. The gull god, the god of all seafaring birds, really tired of its job. The setting, the post-apocalyptic city of Calcoover. Episode 1, Scene 1. We open in the small, dusty, run-down reception office that looks as though it's also used as a rave venue on the weekends. It is, in fact, used as a rave venue every other weekend. There are four chairs staggered along the walls of the office, one of which is occupied by a very grumpy-looking goose. After a few moments of waiting, the office manager addresses the goose. Bonk. Dr. Dude is ready to see you now. <laughs> Okay, Bonk hops off their chair and begrudgingly waddles past the reception window through the door into the doctor's office. Scene two. All right, my computer's up now, so I can read them normal nice. now. Sorry, I was just transitioning. All right, scene two. The structural design of Dr. Dute's office makes one think it was recently hit by a tornado and recently cobbled together into a vague sense of temporary function. This is its default state. Beyond the reception office are not more solid are not more solid walls, but hastily assembled curtains and tarps with shelves somehow attached and holding jars, vials, and other scientific slash alchemic slash magic y substances and articles. It's a bit of an organizational shitstorm at first glance. Bonk hesitantly steps past the door and towards the plague doctor and their assistant, both of whom seem to be fumbling around with brightly colored substances and arguing. Doc, the neutralizing ether is right here. You must have given the last patient the orphan blue. I think I know one lethargy potion from another. Thank you very much. All the blues from that shelf provide some sort of energy, so he got what he came for. Although... If he did take the Orphan Blue without the rose shavings, there is a chance of some minor swelling in his right nostril. Do you want me to send a message, just to be sure? We can't at the moment. I'm still using our carrying pigeon to test that photosynth photosynthesis mutation elixir. Uh. Quiet down, Peggy. I'll let you back out once I see some roots at the end of those talons. Actually, Doc, I think this is your next patient. Huh? Hey, why didn't Kim tell me they let another patient through? They probably did. <laughs> well, what brings you here, my waterfowl friend? <laughs> you, you get any of that? Not a hoot. Get the translation paste. Katie steps over to a low shelf and picks up what seems to be a repurposed Vaseline container holding a bright, almost neon red goo of the same consistency as heavy-duty hair gel. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you to raise your head for a moment while I apply this to under your mouth, uh, Bill. Bonk fearfully complies. There we go. Now, what seems to be the problem? What's the problem? I'm a goose. I see that. You've taken good, very good care of your feathers. Why, thank you. I, that's not the point. I've been turned into a goose. Were you different? Uh, were you a different type of bird before? I've met a few geese that grow up very confused as and uncomfortable ducks. I was a human person before. Rage, googly moogly. A full interspecing transmorgification. That's very exciting. I'm so glad I could excite you. Um, uh, yes, apologies. How did this happen? It's, it, it's kind of a long story. I'm not sure I'll be able to help you if you... Uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to help you if I don't have some info as to the circumstances of the incident. Also, the doc needs a good laugh every now and then. 
Fine, but promise you won't laugh too much when I tell you. I'm afraid that guarantee will cost you extra. We take our clients' hilariously embarrassing stories very seriously around here. Fine. So I was feeding the pigeons two hours ago. Oh, this is going to be good. Scene three. A beachside pier. We see someone enthusiastically chucking breadcrumbs at the ceiling at the circling flock of seagulls, which take turns swooping in and to catch the j- glutinous glutinous morsels. The seagulls and the crumb tower are having the time. Ta- crumb thrower. Sorry. Oh yeah, I totally edited out of the H in my head. Yeah, <laughs> and, the R. And, the, and the R. And the R, yeah. You, you went you, straight for tower. I did. I, Damn, I you totally did. My, 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 my dyslexia so just... The tower the of tower crumb. crumb. <laughs> Jen is tall now. Oh, uh, fuck. Sorry. The seagulls and the crumb thrower are having the time of their lives, a truly wholesome commune between humanity and their avian cousins. After about a minute, someone walks up next to the crumb thrower. They have neon pink hair and an aggressively brightly colored windbreaker. The crumb thrower continues throwing crumbs during the following interaction. Hear how it's bad luck to strike a seabird? Yeah, they're supposedly the reincarnated souls of sailors and lighthouse keepers. I wonder if Seagull ever dies and reincarnates as a person. Uh, uh, it's probably more likely than you, I mean, either of us think. I think so, too. Name's Janet. I'm a witch. I'm Bong. I used to be a seagull. I didn't realize we were introducing ourselves as fictional characters. Neither did I. Neat. So, if you were to throw a rock at a seabird, does that count as striking it? I'd imagine so. But striking implies more of, like, a direct blow than a projectile impact. It's more about the intent of violence, if you ask me. What if you throw something less dangerous? Like what? Like, say, a loaf of bread. What kind of bread are we talking about? Does it matter? I should think so. You can do a lot more damage to the rye or sourdough mound than you can with some unsliced Wonder Bread. Cut back to Doot's office. I'm sorry, what does this have to do with you getting turned into a goose? I'm getting to that! Jeez, you never heard of situational context? Dr. Doot has other clients to attend to. I'm sure they'll be fine. The technicalities of the seabird principle are very fascinating. Particularly in their relation to the pet pastry de- uh, particularly in their relation to the pastry density. Please go on. Thank you. Anyway, cut so, back to Pierre. So, does the size of the bread matter too? Well, again, that depends on the bread's composition and density, as well as the power of the throw. A well-paced bit of whole grain can do about as much damage as a well-flung pine needle. Given a temperamental enough seagull, I'm sure there's a chance that'll be just enough to be <coughs> If one of those crumbs were to accidentally bop one of those seagulls right on their silly little noggins, is that enough to constitute a strike? I'd say at the end of it all, it comes down to intent. I'm not throwing these crumbs at the seagulls. I'm throwing them to the seagulls as an extension of goodwill. Do you have to be angry at the seagulls in order for an angry throw to count? Of course it does. We, uh, the seagulls never ask to be used as target practice for your cathartic outbursts. Very interesting. So, any trace of sudden anger that gets infused into your little public service could net you a full-on sailor's curse. I guess so. Never thought of it that way. I guess nobody better make you angry while you do this. Nobody ought to do anything suddenly very irritating, especially if it throws off your aim. What are you getting at? Bonk raises their arm to throw more crumbs. On it! Related note, have you ever met a pelican by the name of Jeffrey? <laughs> Motherfucker! As they throw a crumb. The crumb flies through the air, accelerated a great deal from the force of Bonk's rage-fueled throw. The seagulls were, uh, were not ready for this. One in particular was already approaching for a leisurely swoop into the next crumb. 
but was instead met with a sharp, seedy chunk of bread landing directly in its eye, causing the bird to plummet into the tepid waves of the ocean. After watching this dreadful scene in silence, Bonk turns to Janet. What in God's name have you done? Lightning strikes, thunder roars! Just found myself a client! A giant feathery shape emerges from the murky waters and rears its long, hooked yellow beak. <laughs> Who dares invoke the wrath of the Gull God? Oh, God damn it! not you again. What have you done now? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, it wasn't my fault this time. Uh, wait, you you know this giant seagull deity? We're shall we say former colleagues? Well. So you weren't lying about the used to be a seagull thing. You mean you weren't lying about the witch thing? Which witch thing? The witch witch thing thing! Silence! You have struck one of my brethren, and for that you must pay. Again? I feel like last time was a bit overkill, turning me human. Can't that just count for this time too? I wouldn't have even done it if, if this witch hadn't pissed me off right before I threw the crumb. You mentioned Jeffrey, didn't you? Sure did. Classic. <laughs> Good rating. This is beautiful. This is great. Oh my god. The, oh. the god of seagulls can turn y'all human? Yeah. Neat. Well, I suppose if it wasn't fully intentional... And you do <laughs> seem to be having a pretty shit time as a human. I mean, look at you. Not sure that's relevant or necessary. Here's what I'll do. The boys underwater need to fill out paperwork confirming that someone's <laughs> been adequately punished. So I can't leave you as is. So I'll use the opportunity to change you back to a bird, but it can't be a seagull. Do we have a deal? Fine. Just as long as it's nothing too conspicuous. A beam of white feathery light fires out of the gull god's open mouth and coats Bonk in white as they change in terrifying anamorphs fashion into a white goose. Cut back to Dude's nightmares. office. What? They put the nightmares. <laughs> yeah. It's really disgusting. Like the neck is extending really what long and stretched minute? while the head shrinks yeah. and the arms. Yeah, the neck is spread. extending, but it's still a human face. The elbows turn in backwards and yeah. like, cause, cause birds. Okay, can we, can we not? Like... <laughs> can we not? Can we not go into detail? <laughs> what? Are you, sorry, you asked the writer not to describe something. I can't help you with that. <laughs> I did not. I did um, not. I did not ask for a description at all. You oh, asked for nightmares. No. You said thank you for the nightmares, and I gave if you I'm the nightmares. If I'm gonna write fan fiction, it ought to at least contain some body horror. Oh god! All right, ah, love it. So we're, so we're dealing with what seems to be a standard animal deal, animal deity enchantment. Katie, would you mind doing a little research into this skull god? Wait, the story's not done yet. What? But we've identified the source of your goosliness. What more is there to tell? Well, I guess the witch wasn't done doing what she was there to do. Cut back to the pier. Bonk is sitting pitifully on the edge of the pier. Just the saddest goose you ever did see. Man, you seem to have landed yourself in some pretty deep yogurt here. No thanks to you. Minor detail. The point is, I might be able to help you out of this predicament you found yourself in. I didn't find myself in this. This is your fault. Again, neither here nor there. Do you want my help or not? I guess so. Fantastic. Let me just pull out a quick contract here. Contract? Of course. I can't have you running around looking for help from any Joe Schmo when I've already pledged my services to you. Bad for networking and report. Okay. 
Here's a pen if you just sign right here. As they go to sign. What kind of pen is this? Yes, I should have mentioned my apologies. In my line of work, some extra precautions are often taken in order, in order to ensure the contract is upheld. That pen makes it so that you've now signed it with your own blood. My own what? It's all very above board, as they say. Once your problem is solved, the contract will entirely cease to exist, save for a little invoice I keep for the tax records, and you'll be free to live your happy little human life. Human? You mean you won't turn me back to a seagull? Honey, I'm a witch, not a miracle worker. If you want a double transmogrification reversal, that'll cost a bit more than what I expect you can afford. But, I... Wh how did... Now, to get a proper assessment of what we're in for, I'll need you to come visit me in my office, or as we call it in the in industry, my coven. Here's my address, just off the side of the radioactive remains of the Saddle Dome. All right. <laughs> Okay, anything that's in, in within range of the Saddle Dome is automatically radioactive. 100%. <laughs> the red mile is just, it glows. It's a river it's a green of mile just now. sludge. It's a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a green mile. Just a river of sludge. I didn't mm. realize this was set in present day. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the it apocalypse. The fireworks, like... Oh my god, there's so much, so many wood chips. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear alright Janet don't look so glum sweetie this is a win win you get a little closer to getting back to your old self and I get a little more practice reversing deity based spells now if you'll excuse me I've already had my hair in this shade of blue for over half an hour and god help me if it sticks around half an hour more toodles cut back to Dude's office <laughs> anyway <laughs> That's why I'm here. I don't know if I want this lady messing around with my seagull curse, but no one else can help me before the contract gets taken care of. Oh my, my. That is quite the conundrum. I've seen and heard a few things about these blood bound contracts, and, like, they're no joke. Did the witch mention her name? I think it was something like Jane, or Jenna, or Matthew, or something. Matthew? Yeah, something starting with J. Wait, that, that doesn't... Katie, please fetch me the arcane phone book. Uh, and Bonk, you may want to step back. Uh, for a phone book? Yes, this one's been in a shit mood ever since I asked it to find the number for who gets who gets to replace the arcane phone books from now on. God damn it, it slipped away! Uh, grab it! <sighs> Uh, Doot lifts a boot and swiftly stamps it down on a furiously chopping leather phone book with pointed teeth among its bindings. Would you mind setting one of your webbed tootsies on the side of the page, please? The <clears throat> thank, thank you. Now, uh, let's see. Spell removal services in J, Jacob, James, Jankle, McBubble Cheeks. Never again with that fellow. Unless I ever need an obscene number? Honey, do melons. Hey, wait. Was it Janet? That's the one! Lovely! Can't say I'm good with this individual. She says she's a witch. A few times, yes. Well. We're going to figure out any way of getting around this contract. I'll need a little more information as to come to the term, uh, as to the terms of your deal with her. This will also cost extra. Great. <clears throat> getting out of a blood contract is no easy feat, especially without upholding it. Katie, do you have those perception herbs? I'll have to check in the back. There's a back of here? Why do we need the herbs? You're going to accompany our friend. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I caught your name. It's Bonk. Really? You got a problem with that, Dr. Doot? Touche. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh my god, savage. <laughs> Touche. Anyway, Katie, you're going to accompany Bonk here to meet with this Janet individual, and we'll see what we can find out. Won't the witch get spooked when she sees someone with me? If all goes as it should, she wouldn't even notice Katie's there. 
Oh, so these herbs are going to make them invisible? Oh, heavens no. I'm a plague doctor, not a miracle worker. I gotta find me one of those. These herbs will simply mask Katie from the perceptive senses of those around them. Not only should the witch not notice them, neither will you. Not invisible, <sighs> just really difficult to realize they're there. Hidden in plain sight, you might say. Are you And you're sure this will work? Absolutely. Once you've come back from this little recon mission, we can figure out the next steps. Now, I have to prepare a few things with Katie, so you wait out in the lobby for a moment. Alright, I'm trusting you, Doc. Bonk leaves. Do you really think the perception herbs are gonna work that well? Especially against a witch? Honestly, I haven't got a flea-bitten clue, but... It'll be plenty entertaining for you if they don't, though. And plenty dangerous. You're always telling me you want to do more field work, so here's your chance. I think I'd prefer the field to involve pots and not involve witches and seagull deities. My father used to say the exact same thing, but, well, off you go. Stay sharp out there. Who applies for lab assistantship in assistant internships after a worldwide apocalypse anyway? I do. Not sure what I expected. End of End. episode one. I love it. That's it. I love it, Colin. That, that was, was ridiculous. I loved Amazing. every second of yeah. it. You got the sarcastic <laughs> asshole perfectly. I'm sorry. You got the sarcastic <laughs> asshole with me perfectly. Yeah. Oh, I, love I it. am going to write myself a monologue about pottery for you to insert into one of these episodes somewhere. Oh, yes. good. There has to be. <laughs> you ever heard of a pelican named Jeffrey? That was legit anger I, I had in my voice, by the way. That was legitimate Good. anger. Yes. Good. I think that was the point. That's <laughs> acting, <Jennifer>. baby. <laughs> Trying to predict it being predictable. Method actor. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Tracks. If you're watching, uh, thank you for being here. If you're watching live, I appreciate it. Thank you to God Mochi and Certified Dummy. Uh for following really appreciate it um if you are watching on the vod or live and you have not followed um that that maybe you want to do that that'd be really cool um if you have already done that and you have not subscribed that'd be pretty cool you get access to our discord server um you can hang out with the with with us um and uh yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, you can like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, uh, head over to Twitch and do stuff there. Um, if you want to get merch, we got merch at uh, streamlabs.com slash 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 merch. Yeah, we got <laughs> we got freaking we got some new spook date merch uh, with designs uh, made by my made by mostly Alicia but with a little input from me. It's also insanely um, cute. It's adorable. Yes. It is. We're very proud of it. Good. Uh, I also have another item uh, in the pipeline that will be fit. I'm very excited to reveal. Chaos, yes. Um, yeah. Other than that, thanks so much. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>